Hi, back for the short form here for lecture two. The biggest thing with it, <clears throat> nutrition, I was talking, I told you, don't worry about the big, huge definition, but it's the processes by which we consume food, digest, absorb, break it down, absorb it into the blood, and then build whatever tissues, enzymes, whatever items that we need it for. So all the processes that are involved and for us to sit here and produce and utilize it in whatever forms that we need. So primary processes and ingestion is easy. You know, common sense says we have to eat it and we have to consume it. But then we have to worry about digestion. And where we talk in 301 nutrition, where we're, we're applying how to feed them more so than all the details of what goes on in the processes, we talk about passage rate and the fact that we need to slow it down long enough so that that animal has time to fully digest and get things into the smallest possible particles so they can be absorbed into the bloodstream. Once we're absorbed in the blood, we're gonna circle and cycle through the liver. Um, we're gonna come back through the heart and the, um, the lungs and make sure we oxygenate it. And then we can worry about it and we can actually go to where it's absorbed into whatever cell or tissue that we need. Metabolism, of course, is the last or the final process. And that's the one that we've discussed with our metabolism chart that you're gonna have for bonus on several exams. So metabolism, don't worry about all the details. Uh, by the time we're at the end of this semester, you'll pretty well know that chart in depth. So nutrients, six nutrients, need to know them. Most important one, of course, is going to be water. And we talked about the fact that we can survive without other nutrients for a longer period of time. But since water is a key component for transportation, for blood, uh, for the brain, for spinal fluid, uh, for cell size, we talk muscle, we talk organs, water and the cytoplasm is a key component for that as well as blood to get oxygen and nutrients to tissues and to take them away. So water is gonna easily be our most important one. The next three, if you wanna put them down, carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids, all can be used for energy. Uh, carbohydrates will be our primary energy source. We saw our metabolism chart with our glucose. Uh, we remember respiration, we talked about at water. Uh, C6H12O6 and the way it goes through glycolysis for us to get ATP or energy for the processes in the body. For me, excuse me, for me, probably the next most important uh, after water is going to be proteins. And proteins are really dynamic. And so we're talking about our organs, our skins, our largest um, organ. We talk about muscle. And we also talk about protein hormones and protein enzymes that are needed to catalyze um, many reactions in the body. So proteins are very important in that aspect. Lipids, of course, or fats are gonna be used primarily for energy sources. Um, once we get in the body, we'll use them for insulation. There's storage form of energy in the body. And again, I digress, but you can go back to your metabolism chart that we looked at, um, go back through that video and kind of freshen up. Minerals, we'll get into a more detail later, but primary thing with minerals is calcium and phosphorus. That's a skeleton. That's our foundation for what we can sit here or the animal body. Vitamins are gonna catalyze many of those reactions that we saw um, in our metabolism chart. So all those eras are things that we sit there and um, consider or look at for vitamins. Now, that chart, kind of hard to see, but of a feed stuff, there is a water component. And so if we're talking about a fresh grass or even watermelon, you're gonna have considerable amounts of water in there and very little dry matter. So a lot of times dry matter, if we're talking hay or we're talking a feed stuff, we have very little water, but a lot of dry matter. And so once we split those out, we have an organic or carbon-based um, component and we have an inorganic. 
So our minerals there that don't have a carbon involved with them. Um, energy, we talked, lipids, carbohydrates, our proteins up top. We'll get those into more detail. We actually cover that more when we get into the animal feeding class in the spring. Nutrient uses, constituents of the body. First and foremost, we said minerals. We gotta have a skeleton to put things on. Protein, because we gotta have skin to go over the outside, organs on the inside. Also with protein, we have to have muscle or protein for muscle to sit and go on the outside or external of the skeleton. Water is gonna be a key component because it's going to be in our blood, in our digestive tract, and also is cytoplasm within a cell. Chemical reactions that occur in the body, um, there's multiple ones, but just for instance, respiration that we've talked about that at water determined. Sources of energy, and we said that uh, carbohydrates, proteins and lipids are all provide source of energy. Transportation, primary one for transportation is water. Water makes up probably 90% of the blood volume. And so it transports nutrients to and transports waste products from uh, various cells. Temperature regulation, of course, an obvious one again would be water, but we also talk too about minerals our sodium, potassium, our electrolytes, where we drink a Gatorade, a Powerade to replenish those. Also other minerals such as iodine, it's used for um, thyroid hormones that help maintain body and regulate body temp. And then the one we had fun with was palatability. And my example was, um, I guess growing up when I was younger, you know, and you had to eat oatmeal and by golly, if it wasn't for a lot of sugar, or syrup or honey or whatnot. I just wasn't really gonna get that oatmeal down. So carbohydrates in the form of sugars, um, when we talk animals, a lot of times molasses. And so that's gonna help in terms of palatability. The other thing with palatability too is uh, fat. Uh, think butter, think your own salad dressings, let's think mayonnaise. Those are all fat-based components that provide flavor uh, that enhances digestion or enhances, excuse me, consumption of your diet. If, it, if they don't eat it, it doesn't matter how healthy it is. For me, if it's rice cakes, there's not enough peanut butter and enough um, whatever to add for me to be able to get it down. So palatability of the diet, another one that was mentioned in class was minerals. And of course, we're from South Louisiana, so we add salt to our salt a lot of times for our diets.